Displaying data on a map can become a problem when you have a lot of data. And you can actually leverage features from Azure Maps for clustering the data. Ricky from the Azure Maps team comes again on the IT Show to tell us everything you need to know about clustering data on maps. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. And today, we have Ricky from the Azure Maps team. Ricky, thanks for coming to the show again. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> so today, we'll talk about something which is pretty interesting with Maps, uh, one of the many capabilities. Um, maps is, is about visualization of Maps. It's also about things that are happening in the back. Today, we're talking about clustering data, right? right. So when, when we think about IoT scenarios, because I like to put things around IoT scenarios, it's called the IoT show after all, right? Mm -hmm. um, potentially, you have lots of data you want to show. Like you want to have uh, any device that actually shows on a map with its own data set, data point, whatever. You can have millions of devices showing up. Mm -hmm. um, right, yeah. And, um, and one of the big issues uh, developers often come across is they have all these, these things they want to show on a map. and Sure, our map control can handle large data sets, but mm -hmm. you get it on there and you realize that you have so many pins on the map, you can't yeah. even see the map. Exactly. And half the pins are hidden by other pins. Yeah. Uh, and so you want to make that more usable and more nav navigatable. So you know, when you're zoomed out and you're looking at the whole world, you don't need to see every individual pin. You mm -hmm. just want to know, okay, where is my group of pins? And so that aggregate exactly. is known as clustering. Clustering, that's the name of that yeah. thing. So there's, I guess, different methods mm -hmm. for doing that. Uh, yeah. for, for, from the developer's perspective. The idea is to simplify developers' life and then not to have to think about it and give Correct. them options, some knobs to configure all of that. So how is it done in Azure Maps? And show me, right. show me that. Well, let's start off with just taking a look at the whole concept of yeah. clustering. So if we switch to the, uh, the computer here, um, we can see you know, a typical example. I, uh, I think this is actually uh, um, shipwrecks. Okay. Uh, so tons of shipwrecks all over uh, North America. And... Um, if we well, on the coast, yeah, along the coast. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, some of them are in on uh, lakes, in, in lakes as well. Lakes yeah, as yeah, well. Sure. We see a lot in the Great Lakes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the um, so one of the basic algorithms, or there's a lot of different algorithms for clustering. But one basic one is called grid-based uh, clustering. Okay. Where essentially you take the map, you break it up into a grid, mm -hmm. uh, and then you count the number of, of pins in each grid cell. Okay. And that's your size of your cluster. Pretty really straightforward. And okay. then you can go through and you pick a point inside of that grid to be uh, the, the where you want to put your cluster. Could be okay. the the average uh, location. Could okay. be just the center of the cell. Okay. Um, and then now we get our clusters inside of each cell. Mm -hmm. And then finally, you know, we remove that. Uh, okay. Normally, the grid doesn't show up. That's just for <laughs> pretty, <laughs> pretty straightforward. Yeah, so Useful, because yes, the result you're seeing here is actually way more understandable and digestible for a human right. eye. Right. And then as you zoom in, this gets recalculated, and you'll end up with uh, you know a different set of clusters. The clusters mm -hmm. will break apart, and when you zoom in close enough, there won't be any more clusters. Those okay. are the individual pins. Okay. Uh, Love it. Yeah, so the um, a bit of interesting history about this. So the mm -hmm. grid-based algorithm is, a, is an older one. There's some, a lot of newer things here. But uh, 12 years ago, I was contracted by Microsoft to write some interesting articles on how to use maps. And so this was one thing I was experimenting with. I ended up writing an article for MSDN on how to do grid-based clustering. And made all the code open source on as an article on MSDN. Yeah, yeah. That's how we did it back so, then. Yeah, 12 years ago, open yeah. source on MSDN. And um, it ended up making its way into a bunch of the Microsoft mapping platforms yeah. and actually ended up making it out into the community platforms, uh, such as Leaflet and even some of our competitor mapping platforms out there, too. Nice. Um, as time went on, you know, the community took over and made it a lot better. It made a lot more improvements. And now today, we actually use uh, an open source <laughs> library <laughs> called the Supercluster. What uh, goes around <laughs> comes yeah. around. So yeah, that you know that initial payoff of handing off something to the community has come back, and we've got something that was better, which uh, is great. <laughs> and the baby is no longer is a grown up now, right? Right. Yeah. Awesome. So let's take a, a, a quick look at how to actually uh, yeah, or a cl at an actual yeah. map and how to, mm -hmm. to actually do this. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, as we can see here, we, we have a map with some clusters similar to uh, before. Yeah. Um, as I zoom in, uh, these clusters will break apart into uh, smaller and smaller bits okay. until I get the individual ones. Okay. Inside of Azure Maps, so, or in this example here, we're going to pull in or we're pulling in data from earthquake feeds uh, from the past month. Okay. Um, in Azure Maps, uh, one of the main ways to bring in data, geojson data, is you, you take it and you put it into what we call the data source. That manages mm -hmm. all the data inside the map for you. Okay. Uh, and it does all the heavy lifting. And one of the options in there is a cluster option. And so we can see this here uh, right in the code. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. um, uh, with that, there's a bunch of other clustering options, such as the radius. So this is using, instead of a grid-based um, method, it uses, it, it takes the first point, does a radius, and puts okay. everything inside of that cluster, and then takes the next unclustered point and does it again. Oh, okay. Um, so slightly different algorithm, but the, um, yeah, the you know, very same uh, end, uh, end goal. Do, do you have, like, rules on which method to use versus another one? Uh, so we only use the one. The, uh, so the uh, the grid one is nice and fast, but the uh, the final uh, uh, layout isn't always great. Okay. Um, whereas the um, the point based one is, is is a little bit more compute, but it always looks a lot better. Got it. Okay, makes yeah. sense. Um, and so that's what we we prefer. And so yeah, we can go through set the radius. You can even set a maximum zoom level because mm -hmm. if you have two points that are like right next door to each other, mm -hmm. you have to zoom in really close before they'll actually separate. Yep. And so you might say, ah, you know, I don't care if they overlap a little bit. Um, so let's say you know once we hit zoom level fifteen, just turn off clustering. Okay. And, got it. Yep. Yeah, and so that's what we do. And so we simply just set these options on the data mm -hmm. source. Everything else you, you would do normally with Azure Maps for rendering okay. stays the same. Um, one thing that you would probably want to do is render clusters differently. Okay. And so in this example here, I use a bubble layer. And I'm using some expressions to scale the size based on the number of points inside the cluster yeah. and also to change the color based on the number of points inside the cluster. And so there's this point count, which is one of the properties of a cluster. Pretty straightforward. You yeah. realize that people will actually just use your sample here to do yes. it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, copy paste. That's the, the beauty. It's all of this is on GitHub. Right. Um, Once again, 12 years from now, <laughs> <laughs> you'll see a code coming It'll be back. even better. <laughs> um, so in this example, like we, I was using skilled circles, but you can use any of the rendering yeah. uh, capabilities inside of, of Azure Maps. So here's an example doing clustering using symbols, uh, icons. Yeah. And so we see these, uh, the triangles representing the number of uh, or our cluster and the mm -hmm. circular things are individual earthquakes in this case. Okay. Um, some other interesting things, so you might, you know, clusters represent an area, mm -hmm. and so you, you know, sometimes you want to know what is that area, or where, where, what's that yeah. general yep. area. And so uh, I have this sample here where you can hover over uh, different points and it mm -hmm. calculates an area. Okay. What this essentially is doing is taking all the points of that cluster yeah. and calculating what's called the convex hull. So okay. a convex hull, basically you take an elastic band, mm -hmm. stretch it around your, your data, and that's and your that polygon. Got it. And so it's actually quite simple to implement. So in this case here, I've set up a, a mouse over event and mm -hmm. that calls this function here called display cluster area. Okay. Uh, I grab my shape out of that um, out of that event, mm -hmm. uh, and then um, with the data source, there, we have some methods uh, that we've exposed for getting access to that raw data. So you go through and for clusters, you can mm -hmm. pass in the ID of the cluster and say get the cluster leaves. Okay. Um, and so that basically gets all the children um, uh, from there. Um, we'll yeah, that will be like a, a has a callback because it's a, you know a, an intensive calculation yeah, sometimes, yeah. and it'll uh, return back all the uh, all the shapes or all the points in that uh, cluster. I love that. Yeah. Uh, from there, um, you know, if there's only two points, well, mm -hmm. we don't want to we don't even need to calculate. We just draw a, a line because. Yeah. But if there's more than two points, then uh, we can use the get convex hull function of our math library, which is built into Azure Maps, mm -hmm. and simply pass those points in. That generates our polygon, and we just add it to the data source and we're done. Love it. One mm -hmm. thing I want to point out is mm -hmm. once again, mm -hmm. because it's a past service, mm -hmm. calculations are happening in the back end. Mm -hmm. So you can have a client, mm -hmm. which is the browser and the machine is running on, which is mm -hmm. pretty poor in terms of CPU and others. Mm -hmm. Because Maps is actually powered by the cloud, mm -hmm. you would actually have that interaction with that map, even on a poorly featured right. uh, and, and, and limited Hardware client, yeah, it actually have the same result in terms of the the, the comfort of the UI, the information, right. and so forth, right? Yeah. So in this example here, I'm using the library that's built into our, our, our web SDK. So yeah. this is happening locally, but we do have yeah, a set of services for doing these same calculations okay. in the cloud. Yeah. But but the data yeah. actually mm -hmm. is in the cloud itself, right? So you have some mm -hmm. calculation happening right. locally, but lots of it is actually happening right. in the cloud as well. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so let's take a look at another example. So this is a, a newer feature that we expose. So you have your clusters again, but mm -hmm. in this case here, this is clusters of points of interest, mm -hmm. um, but and it's a mix of one of four different types. And so what I've done is we, we have this thing called cluster aggregates. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, you want to you have a cluster, you want to do some kind of calculation or, or with the data inside of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to calculate the total revenue of all the yep. things inside. Well, the best time to do that calculation is when the cluster is being calculated because mm -hmm. you're doing one loop over the data. If I had to do it later, then now I'm doing a second loop over the data. And so, you know, I can do this in line and say in my in the data source, also calculate this while you're doing the clustering. And so, in this case here, if I click on one of the clusters, 
Uh, we're just seeing a pop-up that lists the number of um, uh, uh, points of interest mm -hmm. and uh, of each type. So the, okay. of the four types, so we got gas stations and things like that. Um, and so if we take a quick look, here, here we are again at the data source. We got uh, a cluster and yeah. I've modified my radius for whatever reason, didn't need to be. But the, <laughs> we introduced this uh, thing called cluster properties. And you can go through and define an object where the key is whatever I want it to be. In okay. this case here, I'm just using the entity names. But then we use a, a data-driven expression to do our math. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have that uh, a whole other video on how to do expressions and tons of documentation. Yep, yep. But the, uh, the idea here is I'm looking for the entity type property of each uh, point, checking to see if it, in this case, uh, is a gas station. If it is, I then take my aggregate, which is uh, gas stations again, mm -hmm. uh, and add one to it. Yep. Uh, yeah, otherwise, I add zero. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so straightforward. Yeah, and so this here, ca these calculations will happen every t uh, uh, for each cluster as it's being built. Okay. And so as I pan and zoom in, all that's already being done. Already I don't have to do all these again. And um, additionally, as I go down, you know, I want to go through and show that in that pop-up. Well, um, let's go here. We click, uh, click the uh, cluster. So now, if I go into the um, uh, the cluster, I have the properties. Mm -hmm. And then um, on, there's a bunch of properties that come out of there, but there's also another property, uh, which all the properties I added, or mm -hmm. cluster properties, will also be uh, properties of that as well. And so yeah. I, I'm doing just a, a for each on, on, the, on those properties here, um, on the entity types, and just um, creating some HTML to list that all out. Uh, but the, yeah, it just pretty makes it right there, so I don't have to do any, any calculations on the fly. It's all done for me. Nice. Another interesting way to use cluster aggregates is create a pie chart. Wow. And so now we've got a, you know, a really interesting um, thing, and I'm using actually SVG um, with, the, with the mouse overs for each slice. And so I'm using an HTML marker to render each pie, and so now it's fully interactive, and I get a ton of data. So I get the, the number of points in mm -hmm. that cluster. I can see the data for each individual metric. And as I, I zoom in, uh, this data here will also uh, update. Nice. Uh, and so it's a really nice data visualization to see a lot of data yeah. on the map and get a lot of insights without having to mainly do a lot of work. You're still in my words. I was about to actually point <laughs> out that, that once again, the notion is not just to display data somewhere. Right? It's right. actually to allow for the user to extract insights rapidly. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to take action on these data as a user. Or, or you need to not spend hours actually deciphering or trying to understand what's going on. So this typically is the kind of, of things that you would expect as a user to get. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we kind of make it simpler for developers to deliver that kind of result. Yeah, and uh, again, it all comes back to, uh, you know, to the, uh, the power of the community. Yes. Uh, being uh, able to reuse the libraries that are already out there. And, uh, it takes and, and, 12 and, years, though. There's been a lot, a lot of improvements over the time, uh, over the over sure. years, and more and more things get added. And so this is, you know, it uh, just helps us do development faster and be able to get these things out to customers faster too. I love it. Thanks, Ricky. And thank you. So if you want to learn more about clustering in Azure Maps, you go to aka.ms/iotshow/mapsclustering in one word. Awesome. Ricky, thanks again for another great IT Show episode about maps. Oh, thanks for having me. Looking forward to see you again soon. Great. <laughs> well, thanks for watching the IT Show. See you soon.